So I want to start off with the very first question, and that is thinking kind of from your very beginning aspects of teaching. How do you start teaching a language like Mandarin Chinese in general? Do you start with things like pinyin, sound systems, and characters? And kind of segueing into that, what do you think works the best or better for learning Mandarin Chinese online in your experience? And today I'm going to go ahead and start with Walt Laoshi. If you can please share your thoughts about those topics, I will be more than happy to repeat any part of the question as well if needed. I thought it was safe after I married Mr. Waltz and became a W last name there. I don't know. Um, it's very difficult for me to explain how I begin beginners, but I have about a three minute video clip that would show you. Would that be okay if I share that? We'd love to. Uh, if I can make it come up here, I should be able to. So start, whoops, not like that. I start that in the right program. Yes. Okay. Then I share my, I have to narrate what I'm doing. It's terrible. I cannot share my screen without saying I'm sharing my screen. I don't know why. Okay. Can everybody see a, a very black thing with a, okay, good. We so can. Go. The subtitles are totally pretentious. I apologize. The Ooh. This is a real class. What does that mean? Superman cool. Is Superman cool? Is Superman cool? Yay! Good for you. Mm -hmm. Superman cool, ma? Superman cool, ma? Cool. 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 Mm -hmm. Superman cool. And when I say cool, I'm going to use a gesture cool like this. The thumbs up, but I'm going to move it downward. Okay, cool. Because my voice has to go downward too. Superman cool. Hmm. Superman cool. Oh, cool. Superman cool. cool. Superman cool. So what did that question? Superman cool. Superman cool. Oh, cool. Is Superman cool or not? Is cool? Superman cool or not cool? Yeah. So there's two uh, ways to ask a question. It's Superman cool. Mm -hmm. hmm. Gonzalo cool. Ma? <laughs> Caroline, you sure? Gonzalo, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Ah, uh, Gonzalo, cool. Oh, Gonzalo, cool. Ah, wow. Caroline, sure. What does sure mean? Says. Yes, says, right. Oh, there it is. Der. Caroline, sure. Gonzalo, cool. Ni, cool. Cool. Okay. So asking you. Cool. Uh -huh. Am I cool or not cool? Right. Ni cool, cool. 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 Ah, Gonzalo. Sure. Ta. Cool. You don't have to listen to the whole hour. Don't worry. Caroline, you sure? Gonzalo, I, bu, I, Justin Bieber. Who I, Justin Bieber, Yin Wei, Haley, I, Justin Bieber. Haley, I, Haley. Um, his wife, I think. Oh, his man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what I know. <laughs> oh, Haley, I, Justin Bieber. Haley, I, Bu, I, Gonzalo. Haley, yeah, I, <laughs> me. <laughs> Yeah, I will. You would say, I will. Right? Okay. Oh, Haley, I, Justin Bieber. Dan, shu. Haley, yeah, I, Gonzalo. Oh, hmm. hmm. Haley, I, Gonzalo. Hmm. Haley, I, bu, I, Gonzalo, the chin. Haley, I, Gonzalo. Ah, Haley, I, Gonzalo. Tabu, I, Gonzalo, de Chen. Ta, I, Gonzalo. Inwe, Gonzalo. Inwe, Gonzalo, yep. Who? Mm. Haley, I, Ta. Haley, I, Justin Bieber. Dan Shi. Ta, I, Justin Bieber, de Chen. Haley, sure. Justin Bieber, boo Justin Bieber, boo 
，但是我爱他的钱。All right. Just to give you an idea, whoa, not again. I think once was more than enough.、Um, it's just to give you an idea of the kind of input, the kind of back and forth that we have. That was the first hour of a new class. I'd never had Mandarin before, so we would repeat this again and add, you know, a word or two at a time over the next two or three hours. And when they were really solid on all the words, then they would read directly in characters. So no opinion on the characters. My goal is to get a little tiny MP3 recording. I guess that's the latest technology in Chinese in their heads, so that when they read, their eyes say, "I don't know this," but the ear says, "I know what comes next," and then they kind of interact. So that's how I do it. Most impressive, and I am amazed that that is a group that's never been exposed to Mandarin Chinese before. That was fantastic, and. Having that interaction, making it fun, and also a little bit of elements of spontaneity in there, some unexpected answers, it definitely makes it a lot of fun. Wow, that was amazing! And I love that we were actually able to see, starting from the very beginning, and kind of the progression that the students are taking through the very first lesson. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. That was amazing. Thank you. But it was okay. I wasn't sure, but good. Fantastic. Thank you. Excellent. And I'll again the same question. I'm going to pass the question to Kas Laoshi. How do you start teaching online in general? What do you start with, and then kind of segueing into what works better, in your opinion, for online learning of Mandarin Chinese in your experience? Sure,、um, a couple things. So the first thing with online anything, or I would actually say teaching in general, right? Is I think as important as getting to the thing you're there to be doing is making sure that you are establishing sort of. Sense of community and safe space, and what you're there to do, and why the people in the room are there, and what it sort of means to learn something, particularly something that can be as exciting, but also as anxiety-inducing as another language. Right to sort of put yourself back in that space where you suddenly are stripped of your ability to sort of be funny and be interesting and be fully yourself is actually a really challenging thing to do. Right. So I think from the beginning. Making sure that you kind of have that community, and that's going to look perhaps technically a little bit different online versus in a physical space, but conceptually, I think is really similar, no matter the kind of space you're in. So for me, it starts、um, day one. This typically happens after some Chinese stuff, and I'll talk about that in a second. But day one, sort of just having a conversation around what it means to be. A good student, what it means to be a good classmate, what it means to be a good teacher. And perhaps what it means to be not as good of a student, classmate, and teacher, and I, you would be surprised how kids as young as four or five can tell you a lot about what they need and want and prefer and have experienced already. When you sort of scaffold it that way,、um, it typically looks like a lot of sticky notes on walls and conversations in my first day or two.、Um, so one thing is is establishing that space that we're a community, we're here to see each other be successful and win. This is going to be a long process, but also a very enjoyable process, and also a process a process that you're going to benefit a lot from, and one that doesn't have to be miserable or overly stressful. I think something really nice that came out of the video we just watched of Terry's is that you're getting these really nice wins really quickly, right? You're sort of either overtly or implicitly dispelling kind of some of the myth around. Chinese is hard, and Chinese is impossible, and this is going to be really unenjoyable for you.、Um, I think people out there in the world have all kinds of ideas about what it means to learn Chinese and learn another language in general, and that's informed by like their own experience, what they've heard from other people. But it's informed even by simple things that we language professionals are guilty of this too. Go around and say things like, you know, Chinese is a Category Four language, and we. Are often our own worst enemy, telling people things like Chinese is really difficult. So one of the things I tell my students really early on is Chinese is different. It's distant from English in a couple of really important ways. This in a similar way that someone who's coming from a background with literacy in Japanese would not find Chinese characters, for example, to be all that overwhelming or you know new.、Um, so. But the key is let other people think Chinese is difficult. But between you and me, it's actually not nearly as difficult as the world makes it out to be. 
other people thinking it's difficult is to your benefit, right? Because then they think you're smart and you work hard and you're interesting and whatever. But secretly in our classroom, I think it's really important to dispel very quickly that language learning is a miserable experience, that language learning is overly challenging, that language learning cannot be full of interesting interaction and fun. And the other one that I really try to get in students' heads as quickly as possible is that it's not a competition. Um, I think one of the things that school does to students from a really young age is make them aware of sort of where they stand in relation to other people, whether they're an A student or not, things like that. And what I tell my students is it's not scientific to compare yourself to anybody but yourself. So you compare where you are at the end of that hour with Terry to where you started at the beginning, right, which is zero to anything. And that's a win, even if someone else in the room you perceive got zero to further than you, right? Because them being good or not good or better or worse doesn't actually change anything for you. So I think for me that the, the keys to language teaching in that early stage is you sort of want to win their hearts and minds a little bit and make sure also that you get whether it looks like some input and wow, look how much you can understand, even though you came in here not knowing any Chinese at all, or some sort of a task that by the end of this first class period, you're going to be able to do something as simple as introduce yourself to people you don't already know in a language you didn't know any of before you got here, or you're going to be able to do a little bit of reading in this first hour or learn something about the writing system that you didn't know before, whatever it is, it's that we're a safe space and community and let's get a quick win or two. So by the end of this day, you're looking forward to coming back and not thinking, wow, this first day of Chinese was miserable. I'm out of here. I think that's, I think that's where I'm living these days. That's definitely understandable. We won't tell anyone that Chinese is not a hard language to learn. We'll kind of keep that between the group here. Um, I like that you mentioned getting those quick wins and then also distancing yourself from the idea that this is going to be very hard. This won't be fun. And and getting those quick wins there, it's going to essentially kind of keep the students coming back. So I, I love that philosophy. And that's kind of one that I take with me as well as an online educator. So thank you for sharing your thoughts on that. We'll pass that question to Jin Laoshi. And again, the question is, how do you start teaching Mandarin Chinese online in general? And what do you find works better for online learning in your experience? Uh, I think I just totally agree with what uh, Terry Laoshi and Gao Laoshi just shared earlier. I think uh, for me, again, I teach high school. Uh, kids might be a little different from, you know, college level or younger kids, right? And um, so I remember, um, you know, uh, for the Zoom year, I call that the Zoom year, um, I decided to change my curriculum a little bit. Uh, I used to have unit, you know, for Chinese one, I have unit one, two, three, four, you know, like greetings, family, you know, a daily routine, that kind of thing. But I decided to add unit zero before unit one. And uh, the idea is I understood very well, online learning experience would be very different from physical classroom learning experience. So I think it takes a little longer and the, uh, the interaction between teacher and students is different. So in that unit one, I just still remember the day one, first time teaching ninth graders, with no Chinese background online. Um, and I think if you remember, I shared last time, uh, besides the textbook, I also asked uh, my school to give each kid a, a little whiteboard to bring home, right? So I think my goal for day one was very clear. I want my students to feel like um, they, uh, they had a big achievement online, day one you know, learning Chinese online. So I just told myself, if at the end of the class, they were able to say ni hao, and they were able to write number one to 10, I'm extremely, I would be extremely happy. So that's exactly what we did. We started the class with a Kahoot, with a lot of culture questions, Chinese culture questions, you know, and uh, some language questions there, such as, um, is 
Cantonese at it also a national standard language for you know for China that kind of questions and then uh, I just started to teach Ni Hao and you know just practice with the students I only show them the characters so we started just by looking at the characters I think actually to the students it would be fascinating because it's very different from you know um, what the language they are familiar with right so this is a Ni Hao. A lot of them have heard Ni Hao many times living in the Bay Area. You know, they have, you know, uh, they had exposure to Chinese language more or less. But these two characters actually are the characters for Ni Hao. I think they were like, wow, okay. The, now we know it's a new language, uh, you know, and this is how you pronounce it. So I didn't go into team right away. I just say, this is me, this is how, say it after me, me how. I, I wanted to say pin for the next uh, step. And, and then we started to learn uh, number one to 10 using the little whiteboard. And I told my student, um, in, when you write Chinese characters, uh, you follow certain orders. So I just start to do one and using my finger to show this is one and, and two, this is two, this is three, right? And I told my students before I wrote those characters, just observe, you know, very carefully, see if you can see um, the, uh, the general rule or one of the general rules for writing characters. They are high school kids, right? They can figure it out very quickly. Top down, yes. And then we move to number four and I told them not adding one more line is not number four. It's a totally different character, number four. And then I did it again and asked them to observe. And one of them said, oh, it's like outside, inside, then close the box. That's what, you know, just, I think by doing, by asking my students, actively participating, you know, in the activity, in the classroom, you know, learning process, they actually can do a lot. But I, I definitely, I want to say my personal experience is that uh, online learning does take a little longer than, you know, in the physical classroom. But at the end, all my students were able to say ni hao, uh, although I need to fix the tones a little bit, but pretty good. And uh, they were able to, to recognize number one to 10. You know, writing, be able, being able to write number one to 10, you know, actually took a little longer. But I think being able to recognize is a great achievement already. And I think they were really happy. They feel like this is a language they are able to work on, they are able to acquire. It's not like, oh my God, something so boring. I hate that word, but something is too uh, exotic. They're not able to do. No, they are, they are able to do it. I think they want to build that confidence since day one, it's just so critical. Excellent. And I can certainly vouch in terms of having that feeling of pride and accomplishment that I've done something. And I like the idea of you starting with what they know. They know ni hao, but do you understand the characters? And let's have a discussion around it. And now they can build a connection. Okay, Mandarin Chinese is something I can connect with. You're building that connection. I also have to vouch. I remember my very first week of studying Japanese at university level. I called my grandmother at the end of the week and I told her, Grandma, I learned all 46 hiragana characters in a week. So I'm sure your students came home and had these dinner table conversations. Mom, Dad, I can write one through 10 in Mandarin Chinese and I can do it all by myself and I know what it means. So, you know, those are the kinds of things that as educators, we kind of need to take those wins in our back pocket. It's the students are making those connections and they're telling other people about their accomplishments and they're proud of themselves. So excellent. I love that answer. Thank you.